have ourselves a situation here. Welcome to the video. Thank you for clicking on it. Cousin It is a little bit perturbed. I think that this is his best angle. Clearly he's not agreeing with me as he's looking off to the left. <laughs> he thinks the other angle looks much better. He doesn't like the fact that there's a leaf on the bottom right there that is going yellow. If I were to turn him around, he insists that that would be his best side. However, <clears throat> I'm gonna stick with what I'm doing, Cousin It. I have executive authority here <laughs> and just welcome everybody to this video of Blooms for You. Quick shout out to all the Orchid Ninjas. Thank you so, so much for being here. Lady Chatterley is doing well, but not in bloom. So we'll just put up a picture when she was at her finest during the summer months. And thank you so much to all of you for your support on the channel. I so appreciate it. If you're not familiar with my Blooms For You series, I'm just going to introduce you to a concept that I've had from Jump, meaning I have a running list of names that pop up in comments that are new, as well as in the back end of the YouTube studio where I can see people that have subscribed if they don't have a private account. So those names, every time there is a new name, they go on a list and bit by bit as orchids come into bloom, I start to dedicate the buds, the sheath, the spike to the names that are then coming up on the list so that I can thank you personally for making an appearance on my channel. The support is greatly appreciated. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Let me know in the comments that you are here in case you have a private account. I can't see you unless you comment. If you have a private account and want to remain anonymous, I respect that, I understand that. Just know that then this blooming of Cousin It goes to everybody that is not on my list for privacy's sake and anonymity and everybody that is also not mentioned in this video today. A little bit more about Cousin It. This is obviously Maxillaria variabilis. And well, right now he measures across about 80 centimeters from the edge of the pot up. He's approximately 60 centimeters. He weighs in at a whopping 15 and a half kilos. <laughs> and he is in an orchid top that is an L size orchid top that is 20 centimeters across. And when I got him in 2018, he didn't fill the pot. He looked silly and ridiculous in it. Kind of skinny, scrawny, what am I doing in this pot? Well, fast forward four years later, that is why he was looking skinny, scrawny in that oversized pot because this is what has happened since then. He puts on a massive spectacle always around January, February, so he's way early in his best and prime time. We've got plenty more of blooms to come. He will still be in bloom in February, but what has surprised me is that he started coming into bloom at the end of November. That to me is new. I guess he doesn't get enough air time for which I always have to apologize to him for seeing as cousin it has become a staple on my channel. He also has his own merch line. He has his own clothing line, <laughs> all of which bit by bit gets exposed based on videos, based on community posts. But if you're interested in anything Cousin It, his merch line is at the bottom of the video. You can check it out. And if there's something that you want that is not listed as part of the merch items, I can make that happen for you. I can even personalize it for you. Put your name on the item, etc., etc. Anyway, thank you, Cousin It, for reminding me that I have to do the little spiel on his behalf, seeing as he has only got eyes and shades and doesn't have a voice. I'm always scolded that afterwards I do not promote him enough, but I am ever so grateful that he is in my collection. The slush that he is, he drinks twice a day everything. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Know that Cousin It is proud to bloom for you as a massive thank you for your support. I couldn't keep him happy without you, that's for sure. Right, let's move on and go and see which orchids have opened and whose names have come up in this video. What a cute 
cute bloom. Yes, I can only show you one because she is that, that tiny that as she is in the viewfinder right now, with a little bit of breeze, she's going to go all over the place. If I show you the whole orchid, we are not actually going to be able to appreciate the blooms. Unfortunately, or let's just say fortunately, let's look at it from the positive side of things. Irene Hill. I have my Dendrobium exili in bloom again for the second time. Her first flush I couldn't exactly film because I was busy with other things that life seemed to throw my way. But the second flush, these blooms are for you to say thank you to you, Irene Hill, for your support on my channel. I'm going to have images of the first flush of blooms with the light, with the buds, etc. And now she's loaded again, loaded for me with more buds because this orchid has been in my collection for quite some time now. I've just been struggling to cultivate her properly, get her established and settled on a mount and just leave her be. Since I managed to do that, she is now starting to look a little bit like a horsetail weed. <laughs> Very healthy stuff, horsetail, mind you. But that is her growing habit. So I am going to stick with the one bloom as the clip. And then I'll be throwing in images about this orchid. The ones I was able to take so that we can also see the detail of this gorgeous tiny little bloom. While I tell you about her fragrance very very strong you wouldn't imagine how strong this teeny tiny bloom is smells of burnt sugar and then there's a little note of vanilla as well very interesting fragrance super appealing i have no problem that she gets bigger and throws more of these blooms out so that i can enjoy more of her fragrance a super unique orchid in my collection i find super resilient as well which is exactly what i need in my conditions for the time being, she's still living outside, but eventually I will bring her in. Has grown exponentially this year in 2022. I have high hopes for her come 2023. We have finally figured out how I can take care of her, and that is on an inorganic mount with a scrubby pad from the kitchen behind it. And this orchid is rocking it at the moment, still working on a new growth that developed early in the year and is already starting another new growth that will hopefully push nicely and continue to grow. This orchid actually just keeps growing and growing, getting longer and longer, and then there's plenty, plenty of branching as well along the stem. And the beauty about this orchid is when you think that you've got something that's dying off, do not cut it off, because if you can tell, the bloom itself seems to be on a twig that looks somewhat dead. Well, this orchid had a little bit of spider mite issues to contend with, Thankfully, I got them under control because these pine needle-like leaves, they really need to be on the orchid and not going yellow and popping off. And that's what happened with the growth point of this one cane, if we'd like to call it that, because mm, that's what it is, even though it's skinny. And I was thinking of grooming the orchid and I thought, well, I'm just going to cut that tip off, make it look pretty again. Luckily, luckily, I never got around to it because bada boom. Here she is blooming on what I thought was a dead cane. Even if her growing point were compromised, she is a happy brancher. So we are going to have ourselves more of the horsetail look the longer that she can stick around and stay in my collection and the longer I can take care of her. I love this orchid. I like any orchid that looks a little bit unique, has something quirky and funky about her, and she certainly fits the bill. And that beautiful burnt molasses, burnt sugar fragrance with a hint of vanilla that just tops the whole thing off. Now, why didn't I wait for my other four or five buds to open to be able to show you this? That is because the bloom duration is a little bit iffy. Sometimes I can get blooms to last six to seven days and other times they'll last at least 10 days, if not two weeks. So I haven't quite figured out what the influences are that make this orchid drop her blooms a little bit faster or not. Now that the temperatures are cooler, I should be able to be a little bit more bold and then wait for other blooms to open. I am not that bold. I missed out the first time to film her, to dedicate her. I'm not going to wait this time around. So... There will be images that show the progression of blooms opening and if not then that means that we've probably lost quite a few blooms and it will still be difficult to see all of them because again compared to the length and the spiddliness of the canes technical word spiddly 
<laughs> it's going to be quite difficult to appreciate all the blooms unless you were here on my patio, Irene Hill, which is unfortunately not the case, but that doesn't stop me from saying thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. I so appreciate it. My unique and funky and spiddly looking, beautifully smelling Dendrobium exilis, she blooms for you. Your support is so appreciated. Thank you so, so much. Okay, I'm in a little bit of a pickle here. <laughs> this is going to hopefully have to do, and I will compensate the distance of the camera to the blooms I'm dedicating by putting in enough images to give you an idea of, of just how gorgeous these blooms are. But first of all, Nugget, thank you so much for your support on my channel. Same to you, Theodore Howell, as well as Z Zalamea, Dolly Sanchez Rivera, Urueso, and Josely Silva. To all of you, thank you so, so much for being here. I appreciate your support. It means a lot to me. Now, why are we so far away? Does this orchid smell bad? No, she smells delicious. She smells so delicious, in fact, that you get hungry and would like yourself some blueberry sugar candy. There is nothing wrong with this orchid at all. We have to be far away because she is so big, long, tall, my tripod can go quite high, but it ends at a certain point. And the second spike of the season has now reached that point where I cannot have my camera top heavy on a tripod that then isn't on a tripod anymore, but standing on one leg. It's going to be precarious if I do that. So forgive me. However, Chao Praia has outgrown my equipment. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining because Chao Praia has had several accidents in the past. And now you may say, well, why don't you move her down the stairs of the west side patio and then you can film her at eye level. And that is because Chao Praia is tied to that fence because of her two hits and falls the last winter when the wind was blowing blowing around like a mini little tornado on my patio. That caused two cracks in her stem. However, she's alive. She has grown beautiful side growth that you can also see, but she is tied to that fence to avoid that from happening a third time. And the roots there have grown into the fence and are somewhere meandering around in that little foliage that is on the other side of that fence. Now, eventually I will have to cut those roots if I ever want to move her. For that reason, I'm already training other roots that are growing super long that want to head into the fence. I'm already pulling them back a little bit so that they don't just meander off on there because this could be a reason that one day I will bring this orchid down a little bit lower so that I know I can always film her no matter how tall she grows. Meanwhile, her second spike is blooming on the section of the stem with the topmost crack. So if she would ever just give me a couple of roots from up there, I can just decapitate her and grow her on as a separate orchid. Seeing as the side growths have gone exponentially large this year, <laughs> my goodness, I cannot tell you. I don't know where this orchid is headed at some point, but I'm so glad that she recovered from those breaks. And I'm hoping that next year in 2023, we are going to have ourselves a Chao Praia spectacle because these new growths are well at blooming size by now. I was kind of hoping maybe this time around she might try and give us one or two spikes, but no, we're going to have to wait until next year. A gorgeous orchid. She looks scruffy. She is not in the right environment in my climate. She would much prefer, as you can see, be tied up against a tree and just let her get on with it. Can't do that if I want to take this orchid with me, seeing as the property is not mine. I am just renting and there is no way I'm going to tie an orchid to a tree with a massive root system that she has and then do the major chop off and then we've got problems. I don't know, but Chao Praia has outgrown my equipment. Amazing. I would not have expected that when I heard the second crack of the stem, but here we are. Love the orchid, love her resilience, and I love that fragrance. I love the blooms, I love the color, what can I say? I love the fact that she is in bloom, and I love the fact that I can say thank you one more time to Nugget, Theodore Howell, Z Zalamea, Dolly Sanchez Rivera, Erueso, and Josely Silva for your support on my channel. I know that I started saying thank you before I said the names, but to continue that sentence on, 
for your support on my channel. And I'll just add another one because I am very grateful. Thank you very, very much. I hope that you are doing well in your part of the world and I hope that you are safe. My Vanda Top Ryer, she blooms for you. And now we've had a little bit of a touch of sun. How cute. Epicantantis Young Yu Gold Coast does not disappoint. My goodness, 16 blooms. And as a massive thank you to Hermine Noben, J Dub8025, Lariane Costa Ramos, Remy M, Debbie Siegel, and Super Swirl83. She blooms for you. Thank you to all of you for your support on my channel. So very much appreciated. I will tell you how thrilled I am that this spike is doing so well because the orchid herself is not that pretty of a sight, but she is performing beautifully after a repot, a sensational repot, somewhere around the summer of 2022. I pulled her out of her old pot two years later. We had a root system that was just divine. All the lecker just fell off of her super easily. And then we up-potted her into a bigger pot and put Lekka back into the pot, and then she does this. So, Epicatantis Young Yu Gold Coast, I can tell you from my experience now, is a super easy orchid to grow, even after a repot intervention, but she is not fragrant. What she makes up with a lack of fragrance is her startling and bright colors. I've taken pictures in the shade, and the clip that appears on occasions is on a hazy, but somewhat trying to be sunny day. I don't know which of the two I like the most, but in saying that, it clearly makes no difference because she's beautiful either way. The pictures in the shade obviously show her truer colors, and then the images where she's in the sun will reflect more peachy colors, more corals, and more oranges. And that is what makes her so beautiful. All these colors that normally would clash, in my opinion, they work beautifully together. And the lip then has a little touch of pink right at the end where it meets the column. Sensational. I have never had 16 blooms on this orchid. The maximum I had was 15, if I remember correctly, maybe 14. The orchid herself is not exactly going to appreciate the temperatures that are coming our way. And the leaves are already starting to object. The new growth that is currently blooming has certain indentations in the leaves and they will eventually turn brown and spotty just like the previous growth. The cutoff mark for this orchid, in my opinion, is around 20 degrees Celsius. Anything below that and she starts to look a little bit ratty. However, that's aesthetics. She still grows very, very well and then she does this. I have absolutely no complaints. And for the first time ever as well, this orchid is already well on her way with her next growth. That has not happened in the history of my owning and caring for this orchid. Normally she grows her growth while she focuses on her spike. That's all she's focusing on. And this year we have her focusing on a spike while she was already starting on the next growth. I have high hopes for my Gold Coast and why not with an orchid like this? The bloom duration is approximately four weeks, especially when the temperatures are cooler. And right now she is indoors because now I have moved my blooming alley inside to the grow space. And what a pop of color she is when it gets a little bit dark and gloomy in there. Just amazing. But I don't want to detract from the purpose of this clip apart from showing you my beautiful Gold Coast. But I do want to make sure that those that I'm dedicating these blooms are well aware of how thankful and grateful I am of their support on the channel. Once again, that would be Hermina Noben, J Dub8025, Lariana Costa Ramos, Remy M, Debbie Siegel, and Super Swirl83. Thank you to all of you so very much for your support on my channel. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. My Epicatante Xiang Yu Gold Coast, she blooms for you. Super happy to once again be able to showcase my Catlia Cernua and have more blooms to dedicate. And these blooms go to John Mickle. Alison Kubo, Michelle Fucarino, or Michele Fucciarino. Either of the two could be an option. Let me know in the comments should you stumble across this clip. Also, Radmila Strahilova and Alice Huisman. Yes, 
for you. This gorgeous little glowing pot of goodness blooms for all of you as a massive thank you for your support on my channel. I say massive even though the blooms are very, very small, but they are so cute. The light today is exceptional because I don't have that much sun going on. It's a diffused light through the clouds, so it's almost like they are too bright for the camera, but the color is true. And every once in a while, we do get to appreciate a little bit of the sparkle that these petal sepals, well, the entire bloom has to offer. I do have some more buds to open, clearly but I am not waiting to film this clip because of the fact that the weather is deteriorating and I've already lost two blooms and I would like to make sure that at least the majority of the blooms are available for you to see. Oh, look at this. I will only know when I download the footage whether you can see that little pixie dust sparkle. Little bit of coral, little bit of pink in that sparkle. And my goodness, aren't they just adorable. This orchid used to be mounted. That's why she looks a little funky in the pot. But she is now starting to come onto her own where I can see blooms spilling out and over. This is just a beautiful sight. I think this angle speaks volumes. We have a little bit of wet in that lip because there was a little bit of a raindrop coming in. So if anybody sees that glistening there, that's not part and parcel of the bloom. That is because a single raindrop landed on it. I really hope that the camera is picking up what I can see. So she is in a classic Rapiculus Lelia setup. She lives out with the Rapiculus Lelias as well. I take care of her exactly the same way, and it is a semi-hydro pot. Her adaptation to being potted up was seamless. However, she has a little bit of a thing going on when she starts to get into bloom, is that older pseudobulbs will shrivel while the growths that are in bloom are blooming. Eventually, though, she picks up again, and that is no cause of alarm. I have never noticed this orchid to struggle to bounce back after a blooming and plump up her pseudobulbs again. If I were to get a little nervous, then I am going to take the blooms off. Having filmed this clip, I feel so much better now. Thank you once again to John Mickle, Alison Kubo, Michelle Fucharino, Radmila Strahilova, and Alice Huisman. Thank you so much for your support on my channel. You are so appreciated and I do hope that you like a little bit of orange in your life. <laughs> Not the edible kind, but this kind with the little pixie dust blooms. So cute. Now, the bloom duration is about three weeks. However, because of the ever-shifting conditions out here on my patio, I only got two weeks out of the first two blooms and they had already faded and that's why I'm not waiting any longer because this major flush here will probably deteriorate before the other ones come on up. If when this video airs, I see more progress with more blooms opening without losing any others, of course, the images will provide that visual to you in this clip as well. So, you know, we can play a little bit of games here when we film a video. This is my Catlia Cernua. Very proud to have her very happy that she's doing well and super happy to say thank you once again to John Mickle, Alison Kubo, Michelle Fucharino, Radmila Strahilova and Alice Huisman. Hand hearts to all of you. Thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. Do you know how you always want to have the money shot when you present blooms? <laughs> well, this is my Fushu Glory Happy Holiday and yeah, beautiful, beautiful bloom display this time around. Very, very pleased, but I'm hiding some very unsightly leaves. <laughs> Look at the leaves on this bifoliant. She hates the cold. Well, so do I. But anyway, let me just make sure that I get this dedication, let people know who these blooms are dedicated to without getting carried away. Money shot or not, let's focus on the blooms. Look, 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 beautiful, beautiful. All the lips are presented in a different angle. But these blooms are for Lynn Bristol, Trend World, Brom Night and Heaven. So thank you to the four of you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I appreciate you a lot. 
I know that one of you is living in orchid paradise climate wise and I just hope that your orchids are doing well. Your support on my channel is appreciated, especially this time of the year. <laughs> it must be nice to be able to put your feet into some sand. Happy holiday, blooming at the right time of year for me. Usually she comes around a little bit earlier in the season. It's the first time I actually have her in bloom during the month of December. But speaking of the cold, I mean, you know, it's, it's not unpleasant. Put two sweaters on, nice thick socks, and everything is fine. However, for orchids, that is not that easy. And my bifoliates, I have several. They do not like the cold temperatures. They don't like anything that is dropping below 18 or 20 degrees Celsius. That is something I'm observing across the board, and then we get unsightly cell structures, especially if I were to treat them now with garlic alcohol. The coldness of the garlic alcohol compounds the cold temperatures on top of that, the colder air and the evaporative cooling, you know, cold, cold, cold. You just don't want to do that. But my goodness, I am super pleased that these buds made it because the orchid was moved from the east side while she was in bud. And I had bud blast from another orchid and I was kind of concerned that she would fail as well. This is the best flaring I have ever had from the Fushu Glory Happy Holiday. Of course, the delightfulness of these blooms is to get them to flare. Sometimes they can just remain pale yellow throughout and the flaring is very, very minimal to observe. I am happy to say I do have a variety. As the blooms mature, I get a fantastic flare and for the first time, I am really seeing a distinction without having to point it out can you see can you see can you see <laughs> she reminds me a little bit of like a mango sorbet ice cream mix kind of thing you know where the mango is swirled in between the vanilla and also from the back she has the flare very distinctly very clearly her fragrance however is more on the citrusy side could be a bit stronger but i blame that on the climate and the temperatures if it were a little bit warmer i think i would have a better fragrance out of her Thankfully, though, she is doing well. I otherwise have absolutely no complaints, which is super important <laughs> this time of year. Once she's finished blooming, I am going to make sure that I keep her somewhat safe for the remainder of the winter. Astoundingly, the growth where she's blooming from only has one leaf. So maybe the spring earlier in 2022 was not to her liking. The summer never really caught up either. But anyway, four blooms, I believe that is a first. I think last year I had three blooms on her. Needless to say, I am somewhat tempted to take the spike off, which I need to support a little bit. I even managed to get the direction of the buds to go the right way, not in the direction of the way the growth bloomed. Managed to turn the orchid just in time for when the buds were developing to come out and spill over some growths as opposed to getting blocked by its own leaf. <laughs> Proud of myself, <laughs> proud of Fushu Glory Happy Holiday. And yeah, her bloom duration of at least four to five weeks is probably going to get cut short just so that she can rest and do this again for us next year. Well, she's doing it for this year. And just as a reminder and another massive thank you, she is doing it for Lynn Bristol, Trend World, From Night and Heaven. To all of you, a massive thank you. Is that better? <laughs> I did actually turn him around. You see what I'm seeing or maybe not? I don't want to move too much because it takes the attention away from him. <laughs> because if I move too much, hello, you can see me. And yes, well, star of the show is Cousin It after all. But I did move him around. It's just I find this angle very, very beautiful. I have to say it's hard to find an angle that currently isn't beautiful. But look at this. Excuse me, cousin. It. I'm coming into the frame. Look at this. <laughs> it's sticking straight up. It looks like something went wrong with his hair gel. And he just has one of those hairs just standing right up like a little punk little punk that he is and I say that lovingly so I'm back center frame so that I don't disturb or take away from the attention anyway in case you wondered cousin it in my case is not fragrant however maxillaria variabilis can be fragrant I just so happen to have one who has no cologne at all 
I hope that you enjoyed the video. If your name didn't come up, know that your name is on the list and eventually there will be a bloom for you. Meanwhile, as a massive thank you for watching the video, as a massive thank you for liking the video, and as a massive thank you for supporting the channel, Cousin It Blooms for you. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a fabulous day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. <laughs> I'm just going to tease him. He hates it when I do this. <laughs> I am normally standing off in the distance talking to you because I don't like to annoy cousin it for obvious reasons. I want him to feel comfortable, taken care of, and swooned over. <laughs> Take care. Bye.